Uh, there's one. Nice. It's a good looking one too. Now there's another one back here. Today I'm out in the forest in pursuit of something a little bit different than fish. I'm actually after post-fire morels. So uh, you saw I just found a couple really nice ones. And these are one of the most sought after spring fungi. And they're very distinct, easy to identify, and they're extremely delicious. Uh, so I thought I'd go over some of the tips and tactics I've been using to find um, fairly good harvest of morels this spring. So first, let's just go a little bit over identification. Uh, so most morels are going to have a cap that looks very different than traditional uh, mushroom caps. So basidiocarps or basidiomycota with a phyla of mushrooms that, you know, like kids draw and like toadstools. Uh, they have a cap with gills up underneath, whereas morels are actually an ascomycota, which is the cup fungi. So they have these series of wrinkles uh, where the cups are formed on the inside here that give them their distinct uh, wrinkly looking head. But something that really sets them apart from uh, a lot of the other similar false morels, uh, some of which are edible and some of which are poisonous, uh, is that they have a hollow core. So let me cut that open for you. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take this. I'm just going to slice it right down the middle. Without slicing my hand, hopefully. And here you can see on the inside, it's hollow. So all the way up through the inside there, even in the stem, is hollow. Right there you can see. And you can open it up, it's hollow on the inside. That's a good indication that it's a true... Uh, black morel. There's a bunch of different species of morels. Uh, yellow morels and the taxonomy is really muddy, uh, but all of the black morel types like this one are edible. Now let's go see if we can find some more. Okay, when harvesting morels, you want to cut right at the base but not dig down in the soil. That way you get a nice clean mushroom and it takes minimal cleaning when you get home. So it's nice and clean and ready to go. Oh, there's one. I can see one hiding right here. You can see it hiding right down in there. They're very good at hiding. Sometimes you'll just see a leaf propped up or bulged up. Especially if you find one, look around nearby. But here we have to be careful because right here is a false morel. And this is gyromitra which is poisonous. Now, nobody's ever died from it, from eating it in the Western United States, and some people do eat it if, they, if you cook it long enough, you supposedly can, but it has killed people in Europe and in the Eastern United States. There's a lot we don't understand about toxicity in mushrooms. In some regions, some species will be toxic, and others, they are not. But I always play the conservative note, so we're gonna leave this here, but I'm gonna show you some uh, traits of this Mushroom. I'm going to cut my other morel real quick and lay it down beside that one. Okay, so there's the true morel. And here is the false morel. And one of the things you're going to notice right away, see when I cut open the bottom, it's not hollow. It's filled with a matrix of tissue. I'm going to cut that open. Now, you see how it's all filled up on the inside versus a true black morel hollow on the inside like a clam. So don't eat this. It contains the same chemical that's in jet fuel. And uh, that doesn't tend to agree with people's stomachs too much. So let's keep looking. So you might be wondering what is the best time of year to target morels, and that's really going to depend on the climate and your elevation. Here in the northwest, uh, traditionally May and June are going to be the best morel months. Uh, so those warmest sites at lower elevation are going to go first. And then uh, as the season progresses, 
at each specific site, you're gonna have about a two to three week window to harvest them. And then, uh, then you're gonna wanna start targeting rather than south facing slopes and warmer sites, you wanna go up in elevation or target north slopes. Now, as I was saying, I'm primarily hunting post fire morels. So typically morels will flush in their fruiting in the one to two years after a burn. There's a lot of hypotheses as to why that is in terms of nutrient release, um, warming of the soils because there's no canopy and there's no duff uh, that helps warm up the soil, let them come through. Um, just re reduction in competition for resources. Uh, but generally that window is pretty short. Uh, so I do highly recommend researching where fire map, your fire maps. Um, a lot of times the Forest Service will provide those for you. But you can also get a really cool app on your phone called Onyx. And I think it's like $30 a year for a state. And it gives you a map of all of the public lands and private lands. Um, but what you can also do is put fire layers on there and it gives you the breakdown of each fire layer by year. So it's really nice because you can save your maps before you go out and you can use it as a tool to help navigate you into areas that might be holding morels. And I'll put a link to that product below. Here's one. All right, so I got another nice one here. And this one is growing in association with this cottonwood next to me. Now, the interesting thing about morels when you're looking for them is there's really two types of morels. There are saprophytic morels that are morels that are just feeding off nutrients uh, in the soil released after these burns. And you can find those virtually anywhere. I mean, I've just found them in open barren patches and other times uh, under pines and under deciduous trees. Uh, but there are also another type of morel that is uh, mycorrhizal. And that is where the morel forms a relationship with uh, different tree species. I find them in association uh, in the West a lot with willows, cottonwoods, poplars, uh, even dogwoods. If you live in the Eastern United States, they might associate with oaks, uh, alders, elms, and things like that. So what is mycorrhizal? So unlike a lot of mushrooms that are just feeding on the nutrients in the soil, uh, mycorrhizal morels uh, form a mutualistic relationship with their tree species. And essentially what that is, is the tree has its own root system and the uh, mycorrhizae uh, of the morel has its own filament system in the soil and the two will combine uh, to increase the surface area. And in exchange, the morels get some sugar and some nutrients from the, from the tree, and the tree gets a little bit of micronutrients and uh, water, so it really increases the water sharing. Uh, so it really benefits both of them. And that's why a lot of times you'll find these morels growing in tight association, even with, in burn areas, with like cottonwoods and willows that survive the burn. So. If you're not finding them out in those open burn places, uh, start keying in on where you are locating those morels and are they associating with certain tree species. In some valleys, I find them, you know, only with cottonwoods and other valleys only with willows. So it's really what's going on at the micro level in the soil with those different morels. All right, let's keep looking. So most of the time, I usually just find ones and twos. Every once in a while though, you'll stumble across a nice pile of them. Like here, I got one, two, three, four, and five. So you gotta be paying close attention because sometimes the only thing that catches my eye is just some needles lifted up or some leaves lifted up. And that's a clue that there might be a mushroom underneath. So you can see here, there's several morels hiding here underneath this stuff. So I need to make sure that, see as I, I look, leaf, lift up back there, you can see there's another one way back in here. So. Definitely look in behind those pine needles underneath leaves if you find one because there's likely to be more nearby.
another good spot to check, especially early season when the air temps um, are still getting pretty chilly at night down in the low 40s or even near freezing, is to check along roadsides because those are often the sunniest and warmest areas. You'll find a number of morels at the higher elevations growing first along the roadsides and it gets you a little bit of a jump and it kind of gives you an idea on when the fruiting is going to come in the off road sites too. So they should follow a week or two behind the road sites. So I stumbled on a big vein here and I found well over a pound and a half probably in the last half hour. Now one of the interesting things like if you're harvesting perennial morels, that are morels in non-burn areas, uh, you might want to limit your harvest so that those reproducing organs, the, the shroom, can sporulate and sustain your local morels. With these fire morels there seems to be less of a conservation concern just because they're just in there for one or two years and then they just seem to peter out. Densities reach anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 morels per hectare. So that's several hundred uh, morels per acre. Um, and you're really not gonna put a major dent in the population if you're just harvesting a modest uh, amount, you know, three to five pounds. So think about that when you're harvesting. If you're harvesting perennial morels in a non-burn area, you might wanna leave a few for conservation. But in the, in the burn areas, I think it's less of a concern. Here's a little different species of cut fungi next to a nice morel. It's a good looking one. And then there's a really big one right here. That's a nice one. All right, so if you have any questions about where to find morels, uh, where you live, feel free to comment below. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit like and subscribe. I will be posting a video in the near future on how to preserve your morels if you happen to get uh, more than a meal's worth. Um, usually my wife and I will eat about a half pound at a sitting, um, but I'm going to go over some of the pre preservation techniques um, in a future video. Alright guys, hopefully I'll see you out in the woods next time and I hope you find lots of morels. Bye!